Welcome everyone to another video. In this video, we'll be finding the normal probability distribution or the area under the curve that it's called or the Z distribution, which is a continuous probability distribution in statistics. So for this video, I prepared the spreadsheet that we'll be using and the diagram here is just to show you the different cases that we're looking at. So for the first case, we'll be looking at the area or the probability of x being less than a certain value. And that value could be either on the left of the mean or on the right of the mean. Second case, the area is between or the probability we're looking for is between x and the mean. So x would be on the left for this case, x would be on the right of the mean in this case. And we're just going to see the differences between these two cases. The fourth case says if we're looking for the area greater than x, and the same idea, x could be on the right of the mean, and we're looking at the greater area, the shaded area here, x could be on the left of the mean, which means we're looking for a greater, which is all this area over here. And the last case says if we're looking at the area between two values. Now for each of this case, we have to do certain modification to the formula to get the area that we want. In all cases, we're going to be using the normal distribution function in Excel. And based on the normal distribution function, I will show you what are the values that we have to enter here and why we have to change from one case to another. So let's look at the normal distribution function. And it's norm.test. Let's click OK, and it will show you what you have to enter. Now, first we have to enter x, which is the value that we're looking for. Then we have to enter the mean and the standard deviation. And the reason we have to do all these different cases is because of the last one. Because the normal distribution function in Excel returns the cumulative distribution, which means the area under the curve from x all the way down to the end, not to the middle. So the cumulative here, it has to be either true if you want the cumulative distribution function or false, and that will return the probability density function, which is something else we're not gonna discuss in this video. So since we're gonna be using true, which means returns all the way down, then we have several modification to do. We're gonna talk about this modification on each example. So let's start by looking at our example. So the example here says what? The amount of money requested on home in home loan applications are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 60,000, standard deviation of 11,000. A loan applicant is received this morning. What's the probability that the amount requested is at most 80,000. At most 80,000 means what? So we're doing this question here. Okay. At most. At most means 80,000 or less. So that's going to be the first case over here. The mean is 60,000, so it's over here. This is 80,000 over here, and I want at most, which means I want x less than. Now, the function gives me that, so I don't have to do any modification over here. I will just take the answer that I get from the normal distribution function. So let's look at the normal distribution function and enter all these values and see what we get. Now, for just saving time typing the values, I'm not going to enter them in thousands. So I'm going to enter x as 80, which means it's in thousand. The mean is 60. And the standard deviation is 11. Here, I want it true. The minute I press OK, it gives me the probability. And here, I change the probability to percentages. So. 
For the first example, as we said, there is nothing we need to do because I'm looking for less than x and the function in Excel gives me less than x. Let's look at the second example. The amount requested is between 55,000 and 60,000. So 55,000 is to the left of the mean and 60,000 is the mean. So we're looking at this case. Now in this case, we know that the normal distribution function is going to give me the area from x all the way down. But that's not what I want. I want this area over here. So I'm going to take the whole area from the mean down, which is 0 0.5, subtract it from this value to get the green value over here. And that's what we're going to do here. So you see the formula at 0 0.5 minus whatever we get from here. So I'm going to grab this function, just copy it, paste it, press F2, and I'm going to change the value from 80 to 55. So now I'm looking at x is 55, the mean is 60, standard deviation 11, and it's cumulative. The minute I press enter, it gives me that the area under the curve for less than 55 is 0 0.32. And the area here, the green area, which is 0 0.5 minus that, is 0 0.1753 or 17.53%. Part C, we're looking at the area between 60 and 65,000. So since 60 is the mean, 65,000 is greater, that means it's the third case. X is to the right of the mean, and I'm still looking at the area between these two values. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to type normal instead of copying. X is 65. Mean is 60. Standard deviation is 11. And we want the true. So we're going to pick the true from here. And we're going to press enter. And you will see that the cumulative distribution is 0 0.67 because it's from X all the way down here. But the blue area I'm looking for is basically 17.53, which is the same answer we got from part B. And the reason for that is the difference between the value I'm looking for in part B and the mean is 5,000 to the left. This is 5,000 to the right. Since it's symmetrical distribution, that means I should get the same area under the curve because the x value I'm looking for are equidistant from the mean. So in this case, the formula here, instead of 0 0.5, which is all of this minus what I get from the table here, I have to add because, sorry, I will have to subtract the area minus 0 0.5 because the function is going to give me from x all the way down and if I subtract from it 0 0.5 I get this blue area over here and that's why the formula here is whatever I get the cumulative distribution minus from the mean down which is 0 0.5. For the fourth case it's a little bit different because I'm looking at area to the right of x. So the, remember, the function gives me from x all the way down. To get from x up, I need to take 1 minus whatever the function gives me in Excel. So Excel is going to give me the area here to the left. To get this area here, since the area under the curve is 1, I will take 1 minus the left, which gives me the right in both cases. So let's look at the example. It says the amount requested is at least 58,000. So let's do the same thing. Normal distribution. Our x is 58. The mean is still 60. Standard deviation 11. And I'm going to say true. So the cumulative area from 58 down is 0 0.427, which means the area I'm looking for, which is at least, which means greater than 
58,000 as 57.1, 21% or 0 0.5721. The last case we're going to be looking at is the amount requested between 53 and 64. So for this particular case, we have two values that we're going to find. Now, remember, the function is going to give me from x all the way down. So it's going to be this area. And for the second value, it's going to give me from x all the way down. So it's all this big area. To get the, blue, the yellow area in the middle, I have to subtract this small area from this big area to get the one in between them. That's why here you look that you take one minus the other. So for the first x, let's just copy the formula and place it here. And place it here. We're going to change this to 53%, uh, sorry, 53,000. Still minus 60, its under deviation is 11. And this one here, we're going to change it to 64,000. So now the area under the curve for 53,000 is 0 0.26227, which is this area here, the white area on the left. For the second one, it's 0 0.64193, which is all the way from here to the left, everything. When I subtract them, I get the yellow area in the middle, which is 37.97%. So the idea here is when you're working with normal distribution, before you find the area or the probability you're looking for, make sure you distinguish between which case do you have, because based on that, either you take the value as it is, P6, which is area to the left, 0 0.5 minus, because you're looking at the area between X and X bar on the left of the mean, the area minus 0 0.5, because it's this case over here, 1 minus the area, because we want x greater than, or subtract both areas. Now, for the last one, it doesn't matter if the two values are on the left, or on the right of the mean, or on separate sides, the formula is the same. You're going to subtract the smaller from the larger value. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to look for other videos, especially the discrete probability distribution which is the binomial and Poisson distribution that we did earlier. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos to come. Have a good day.